This video shows you the scary truth about the Chicago Bulls. Chi-Town's three most dangerous scoring threats in DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Nikola Vucevic combined for 88 points in the Bulls' win over New York, which secured Chicago the number two seed in the East. Here's how the Bulls pulled out a tough W at MSG, and stay tuned to see the factors making this team so damn tough to stop. Before continuing, only 15.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. After missing seven games with one of those outings featuring a loss to the Golden State Warriors, Nikola Vucevic returned on November 24th against the Houston Rockets. And while the Bulls' record is only a slightly above average 4-2 since then, Vooch is starting to regain his rhythm. In his last two games, the two-time All-Star is shooting 11 of 15 from three-point range. When Nikola sets a screen for either Levine, DeRozan, Caruso, or Ball, and then pops out to be on the arc, that opens up driving lanes for the Bulls' high-volume perimeter shot creators to take over. With his distance bombs combined with his face-up long twos, Vooch provides exceptional spacing to Coach Billy Donovan's offensive system. On plays where guys properly rotate to one of Chicago's attacking guards, that means Vucevic has an open look from deep range. And it's not like Vucevic is just any other shooting big man who's letting it fly because his coach told him to. This is one of the greatest three-point marksmen at the center spot of all time. He ranks fourth all-time among five men in total three-pointers made, only behind two modern-day players in Brook Lopez and Carl Anthony Towns. It's a small sample size, but it's no coincidence that once Nikola Vucevic started nailing jumpers like he did against Charlotte on Monday and against New York on Thursday, which we'll get to, that the Bulls' offense amplifies significantly. In his first outing of this week, Vooch dropped 30 points and 14 rebounds, going 12 for 19 from the field and a perfect 6 for 6 from deep. He doesn't qualify because he hasn't played enough games, but Vooch would rank number 10 among all players in rebounds per game. He'd also rank number 8 among all centers in 3-point percentage. But another thing Vooch has been displaying over the last few games is that he's not just a mere stretch 5 who can rebound. He can create offense for his teammates from the post, as this man's a very solid playmaker for his position. Since he's returned from health and safety protocol, Nikola's dropped 18 assists in five games. The product of USC became a two-time All-Star in Orlando for a reason. That being, he's got an extremely high basketball IQ. Vooch is scoring the ball very efficiently, which is a welcome change at the five spot where the Bulls didn't get much for nearly the last 10 games. But Nikola's also creating offense with his screening and passing ability which make the Bulls a different type of threat to take down. He can find DeMar, Zoe, Levine, or Alex off cuts to the basket, and Nikola's big body screens force the switch, which gets the smaller guy on Vucevic in the post. That establishes the advantage, and he doesn't get a stat, but Vooch created these points. Coming off his best performance of the season against Charlotte, Nikola didn't waste any time getting to work against New York. He took Chicago's first three shots of the night and dropped their first seven points, putting up 13 points in nine first quarter minutes. Vucevic made five of his seven field goal attempts, swishing a three-pointer, finishing two put-back tip-ins, and hammering home this slam. Nikola's second half saw him rinse and repeat by scoring the team's first five points of quarter number three, and a few minutes later, after New York cut their deficit to 79-78, he drained a three-pointer to extend the Bulls' lead to four. Down the stretch, Nikola canned another two triples to finish with 27 points on 10 for 18 shooting, 5 for 9 from three-point range, his second 20-point outing in a row after entering the Hornets game with just one on the season. It's clear that Vucevic is finding his footing offensively after looking rusty in his first few outings. Last night's battle with New York was a game of runs, but the Bulls were getting what they wanted early on. It's not often you see a 37-point quarter against Tom Thibodeau coach defenses, but Chicago produced one in the game's first 12 minutes. Zach Levine and Vooch combined to outscore the Knicks as a team, and the Bulls scored 10 points off eight New York turnovers in the first quarter, dominating the hosts at both ends en route to a 37-19 advantage entering quarter number two. By halftime, the Bulls tied a season high for points in a half, with 69, matching their first total Monday against Charlotte and second half total on November 1st at Boston. Through two quarters, the Bulls were shooting 57.4%.
The Knicks dialed up their ball pressure and started the second half on a 27-10 run, eventually winning the quarter 32-20 and holding the Bulls to 34.8% shooting while going 6-for-10 from three-point range. That turned an 18-point halftime lead into an 89-83 Bulls lead entering the fourth. Luckily for fans in Chi-Town, DeMar DeRozan was there to rescue the troops in the clutch. Debo submitted his seventh 30 spot in a Bulls uniform with 34 points on 12 for 19 shooting. 18 of those points came in the final frame, including the Bulls' first 10 points of the fourth quarter. In typical fashion, DeMar made eight of his 10 shots from the mid-range in the contest, four for five in the fourth, and he made 10 of 11 free throw attempts. Debo's now posted 165 fourth quarter points with shooting splits of 52.8, 45.5, and 90.2, 22 points better than Jason Tatum for first in the NBA, and 23 points better than his teammate Levine. Speaking of Zach Levine, he had this to say on DeMar DeRozan's ability to close out games, I don't think a lot rattles him at all, that's when you let him take over the game. Calm it down, get to the free throw line, get to his spots, I think it just gives the whole team like a deep breath, like we're okay. While it was mostly DeRozan, give credit to the Bulls big three as a whole, who were instrumental in securing the W in the Big Apple. Between DeRozan's 18 fourth quarter points, Vucevic's two threes, and a massive step back and four free throws from Levine, miraculously, those three combined to score all 30 of the Bulls' fourth quarter points. Chicago was outscored 32 to 30 in that fourth quarter, but this game was just another example of the completely different and much better late game execution compared to last season when clutch scenarios often dumbfounded them. After the Knicks pulled ahead 108-107 on a Randall floater with three minutes and 18 seconds left, the Bulls won the stretch run 10-6 behind multiple key stops, two trips to the free throw line, a difficult step back from Levine, and a driving lay-in and free throws from DeMar. Alex Caruso went off in the minutes he was given in the only way he knows how, by laying every bit of effort on the line and doing it all. In his first stint, Caruso drew multiple offensive fouls, including one on a moving screen that led to a Taj Gibson outburst and early ejection. He also handed out three dimes, swiped a steal, and scored four points, including this thunderous alley-oop finish on the fast break. AC added another forced turnover and two assists early in the second, before ending his first stint at nine minutes. Then Lonzo Ball picking up his third foul seconds later, forced Caruso to check right back in, and he continued to make an impact. In the fourth, the bald Mamba came up massive multiple times yet again. He swiped three steals, two of which immediately made up for turnovers of his own. And with the game tied at 111, the third strip of Julius Randle with 56 seconds left was the most clutch. Levine and DeRozan rattled off six straight points after that takeaway to put the Knicks to sleep. In 31 minutes, Caruso stuffed the stat sheet, posting six points, six assists, six rebounds, four steals, and he was a game high plus 21 in a four point victory. Then there was Troy Brown Jr. who stepped back into the rotation with Kobe White recovering from COVID-19 and to his credit, the fourth year wing made an impact. In the second quarter, Brown Jr. wrestled a loose ball from Knicks guard Alec Burks, put back an offensive rebound, and buried an open catch and shoot three off a feed from Nikola Vucevic who was operating a four on three advantage after receiving a dump off pass from a double teamed Levine. He finished with five points, two for two shooting, two rebounds and a steal, in nine minutes. It was all the Bulls could have asked for, and a nice example of staying ready for when your number is called. However, for the third game in a row, Lonzo Ball struggled with his shot en route to a two for 10 night from beyond the arc. He found himself in foul trouble by picking up his third personal early in the second and fourth early in the third. That underscores the Achilles heel for what's been really a sturdy Bulls defensive unit all season over fouling. But even when one of their biggest stars in Lonzo isn't performing, guys like Caruso and Troy Brown Jr., who are excellent perimeter defenders, make this team not only top-heavy, but well-rounded. And that's the scary truth about the Chicago Bulls. They can beat you with Vooch, Debo, Zoe, or Levine, but even if those guys are having an off night, the two-way talents all throughout their roster give them the perfect supporting cast for their all-star players. For next video shoutout, what's most scary about the Bulls in your opinion? The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season. 
So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says the most dangerous part about the Hawks roster is their youth. Trey, Collins, Herder, Reddish, and Hunter are all 24 or younger. Pause to read the rest of Boston's amazing take, and thanks for every great answer. Hope you have a good one. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.